local animal rescue is looking to the community to help bolster its funds in an effort to prepare for the upcoming winter. And it's got something special going on for the month of November to help it get there. Lindsay Galanders with Manitoba Underdogs joins me now to explain. Lindsay, thanks so much for joining me. No problem. So first thing right off the bat, can you tell me a little bit about what Manitoba Underdogs is? We're a 100% volunteer-based rescue in Manitoba, um, and our mandate is to rehome unwanted animals and also to spay and neuter animals, um, strays and own animals in communities where veterinary services aren't available to reduce the unwanted pet population in Manitoba. Now, you've got something extra special going on this month. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on? Um, so for November, we are running the Movember Matchathon, um, which is we've got a fantastic donor, the Fetz Family Foundation, that has offered to match donations to our organization up to $10,000. They're fantastic supporters of us, and they want to give us a little bit of a boost heading into the winter season. So any donations that are made to Manitoba Underdogs Rescue during the month of November will be matched dollar for dollar. How exactly does money donated help you guys? Lots of ways. Um, we've got 100 dogs in care right now. I think 39 puppies, lots of moms who have just had litters um, that'll be going up for adoption soon. So feeding and vetting them. Um, we've also got some long-term dogs in care that are dealing with some health, health issues. So of course, it'll go to the veterinary bills there. Um, but most importantly, one of the things that we like to do is we like to run spay and neuter clinics in remote communities. Unfortunately, with COVID-19, we're not able to do that at this time. Um, so we are doing fix and return runs. So we go out to a community, pick up dogs, bring them into the city, uh, spay and neuter them, and then return them back to their families. Um, and we do that uh, where veterinary services are not available in order to keep the, the stray population down. And uh, primarily going into winter when we see a lot of really tragic cases of puppies that don't make it through the winter. So trying to, to mitigate that and to, to do the right thing in those communities. So why exactly is it so important to be able to provide those extra services for places that don't necessarily have access to vet care? Well, we want to basically render ourselves um, useless. I mean, it's great to rehome animals, um, but it's better to stop the problem uh, where it starts. And Manitoba does have quite a significant uh, stray population, uh, lots of problems with um, dogs being hit by cars and freezing to death. We see a lot of tragic cases in the winter. Uh, last winter in particular, we had Greta. She was so hungry, she'd eaten a can. Um, and so she had a, a can in her stomach that was giving her poisoning from the metal. She'd also stuck her head in the jar, trying to get some peanut butter out of the jar, and the jar had frozen to her head, and then she had frozen to the ground. Um, so we were able to save her and get her adopted out and get her back to healthy, which we didn't think we were going to be able to do, but she was a, a little miracle case. But dogs like Greta happen almost every winter. We get one of those really tragic cases and a bunch of almost just as bad. So to us, stopping that before it starts, before it comes to rehoming animals is, is kind of key. And everybody loves puppies. We're not saying we don't love puppies. We love puppies all day long. Um, but unfortunately, you've got cases of mothers who are giving birth twice a year and the population just gets out of control. So stopping that and kind of stopping the pain and suffering before it starts, because not all those dogs get happy endings, unfortunately. If someone wanted to help but couldn't necessarily afford a monetary donation right now, what other ways can they help? Oh, there's lots of ways. Um, money, obviously, is is you know what we're always looking for, but we're also always looking for foster homes. So if you've got room in your in your house um, for a dog to kind of hang out, we don't have a facility, so all of our animals are placed with fosters, and our ability to take in animals is always linked to the ability uh, of fosters to take in those animals. Um, we also accept donations of you know newspaper, puppy pads, dog food. There's a list of preferred brands on our website. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just picking up dogs and driving them around, driving them to appointments. There's lots of ways that people can get involved and give their time instead of money, and we always appreciate that.